I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community produced video from the foundation. We've got a great guest today. We have Jeff McCabe, founder of the Divi Project, and we've got Rob here with us and Hi. Neegs. How's it going, guys? Hi. It's going it's good. Great to be here. Yeah, it's going very good. I hope you have Jeff today. Pretty excited. We missed Jeff. We didn't get him in an avatar. He was trying, though. He was trying. It wasn't because he wasn't willing. It's because he had a little yeah. bit of a technical error there. So Nick's next time we'll have Jeff. It's fine. I got to put on this beautiful avatar background. that looks like me when I was 25. <laughs> I was very, very happy to go, <laughs> go backwards 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it's really, those avatars are really funny because they, we're all a lot younger than we actually are. And, uh, but we have actually other avatars that we started to play with. But in fact, the fact that you were having uh, issues setting it up, it, we also had a ton of issues in the beginning. And I mean, it still yeah. happens here and there that, uh, I don't know, some update came up and we're losing a few hours, but. I mean, we kind of like that. I think it's better than having nothing and just having, you know, a logo that's animated. Um, but yeah, and we'll, we'll see if we can have that for next time. It also helps because, you know, when we roll out of bed, we don't have to comb our hair. No, I'm kidding. I don't have any hair to comb. So Neither do I. This, this is my fake hair. <laughs> I'm growing mine out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. out. If I did that, I have like three. Audio. <laughs> Let me know if you need me to say <laughs> Dang, you're showing off. I cannot do that. I cannot move my arms. I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> I need to die. <laughs> exactly. He's showing off his arms. My arms are stuck here. <laughs> All you can see is tipping back of my head and that's drinking coffee. I'm drinking yeah. coffee now. If I do arms, they do, they do weird stuff. Like, you know, like I can't really actually control them. <laughs> Sometimes I get too few fingers. <laughs> so I just pin it's them down. Funny. Yeah, cool. so <laughs> it's always our stuff. Yeah, it's I think it has been a long time that uh, we didn't have a live with uh, with you. You're very busy doing a lot yeah. of things. So maybe um, I don't know. Maybe we can start. And with, he leaves um, or not? He's <laughs> gone. <laughs> he left. <laughs> and that was today's interview. I hope you enjoyed with, yourself <laughs> with Jeff. This is the live interview we have. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he's right, back. He's back. <laughs> yeah, that was just that was just temporary. All right, I just realized like I was I realized I was incredibly hot because I turned the air conditioner off last night and I didn't turn it back on and now the room's heating up. But, so, uh, go ahead, me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, see that's and that's where I am like I can move away and then yeah. You don't You're see just, anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> Except when you come back, you do a little you do a little <laughs> <laughs> a little hair toss. <laughs> All right, right. So, so that, that's the joke. Your, we're totally digressing about the avatars, but Neeks's avatar, if he leaves, it looks pretty normal. If Rob or I leave, it looks we like freeze. we had a stroke or died. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. I, it was looking like that, but I had a, I changed a bit of settings on my, on my app and now it's, uh, it's keeping a face. Like I'm a, I'm able to cheat like that, <laughs> which yeah. allow me to go drink on the side because otherwise, if I drink, basically it looks like, <laughs> it looks like that. so it's not great. <laughs> All right. And also I look my screens on the side, my monitors, I have one on the right and one on the left and all the, basically during all the videos I was looking on the right or looking on the left, it wasn't great. So I had to find. I had to find ways to, to cheat. Yeah. So I was asking basically to go, because I think that since a long time, like we had a lot of phase with the beginning of TV and then with Cupido and then TV labs. And now we're basically having the side chain adventure. And so I think Rob brought, brought this idea and we could go through kind of the beginnings, how it started. Why did you have this idea to make TV? Um, we thought it could be a, a good idea to kind of have You're, a refresher on that. The Divi origin story. I think we yes, should, like yes. we haven't really done that, and I feel like you're the best person to give us the Divi origin story. So you want like the real deal or like yeah. the okay, uh, sure. full honesty, <laughs> yeah, transparency? This is, like, this is the cold hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is the foundation spaces yeah. so we could be honest. <laughs> so okay, all right, so. So 
I got started in crypto living in Costa Rica in 2013, 2014. I got Bitcoin and my friend, my friend had told me about Bitcoin. He's actually, he's like actually a neighbor now. He actually moved down to Costa Rica and lives next to me. He's friends with Shane as well. And he, um, his name's Robbie. We call him Bitcoin. I call him Bitcoin Robbie. But he told me about it early on, but he was an artist and he, and I, I was a physicist, right? So I grilled him with all these questions like, how can it be unhackable? You know, he was telling me about blockchain. I didn't believe him, you know, this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have good answers because, you know, he wasn't a tech guy. And, and although he's very good at like music technology and video tech tech. And, but and so he's, so then I, but, so I was watching it, you know, I was, I was always following the tech news, even though I was living in the jungle and he, I started going up and up and up and up. And so I was like, oh, maybe I should get some of this stuff. But but I thought, you know what? I'm not going to get Bitcoin. I'm going to find out like the new, cool new ones, you know, that nobody else is getting. And it was the beginning of Ethereum and Ripple. Mm. So I thought, I'll get those. And so I started trying to buy Ripple. And um, because I heard that Google was one of the investors in it. And I thought, oh, that's the one that's going to be the big one, not this Bitcoin thing. And so the only way to buy it, it was, this is so ridiculous, is to go on to Second Life, the, the, uh, really? The, yeah, yeah. The, at the time, the only way that I could find to buy it was to go on to Second Life and get some of their coin in the metaverse and then go to this other website and exchange it for something that you could exchange for Ripple or something like this. <laughs> And wow. then all of the Ripple was, and I, I could only buy like $50 worth at a time and something like this. So every day I was buying like $50 worth. And this is when it was like a hundredth of what it is now. And, um, or maybe a thousandth even. And um, so I started buying it and it was all accumulating in this website. I didn't know what it was. It was like a wallet or something. And now I know what it was, but at the time I, I couldn't really understand what it was. It was like a custodial thing. I didn't know what any of these words meant, just despite being a tech guy, right? Like it was really confusing. And then all of a sudden I got a message that they were hacked or whatever. And there was some sort of vulnerability oh, no. in the bridge between this and that and the other thing. And all my money was gone. <laughs> oh, God. And so I was like, fuck wow. this. So I never bought Ethereum, and um, which was at the time like a dollar, you know, and... Um, and so I lost, I lost like, I think I bought like $600 worth or, or something. And so, so I lost all of it and I bought maybe $500 worth of Bitcoin when it was like 3000 or 6,000. And so, and I was, so then I got out of crypto for like two years, three years, something like this, because I didn't understand it. It was confusing. Nobody could explain it. It was obviously not safe. And it was just not obviously not ready. Um, but I always told myself like, oh, if, you know, why doesn't somebody make a crypto that's easier to use, you know, that gets through all this. And, and so at, at that point, um, I had a friend named Chris Moy who's, who lives in Costa Rica, who was one of the original co-founders of, Digi, of Divi. He and I were surfing buddies. He was a surfer, surfing instructor. And he and I would go to all these parties and drink beer and geek out on SEO, black hat and gray hat techniques. So we were both SEO people at the time. I, I had a network of 30 or 40 websites. And so he was always diving into all these things. And then I gave a presentation there at what's called Silicon, they call it Silicon Beach um, in Santa Teresa, Costa Rica. I was invited by Elian. And I gave a presentation on, on, virtual, on virtual reality because I was the founder of Virtual, Re- virtual Reality Times, which is one of the biggest blogs in, in VR at the time. And so I'd been doing that before I was doing crypto. It was kind of my way of sort of focusing, you know, having my tech life. I don't know, am I giving you too much detail? Or maybe yeah. it's in your friend's no, interest. No, that's and, great. Because no, also, yeah, I, think, I think a lot of people can also identify in that, right? Yeah. Like it is exactly. like getting into crypto and then almost immediately getting into a bad experience is something a lot of people go through because when you hear about it it's usually too late for you to get into it but then now you're interested so you usually get in at the wrong time and then you have a lot of new things that don't have like a little part of similarity with what you know it's like just completely new 
So it is, <laughs> yeah, good. it is an experience it's that way, like, it's, most people go through. I think it's worse yeah, because way, it is completely new, but then they use terms like wallet, and then we think that there's something physically in it. <laughs> And that get, makes it worse. And then when we say you don't have coins, they're on the blockchain, people's eyes glaze over, your head explodes, and you melt on the floor because you don't understand any of that. So, yeah, keep going. I, I'm enjoying yeah. the story. Yeah. So, basically, so I went and did a presentation on VR. I brought my Oculus Rift. It was like Oculus Rift 1 and showed everybody what it was. And people came from San Jose to see all this. And, and somebody else brought one the, H, the one from HTC. And so... Um, Afterwards, the next the next one they did was going to be on blockchain, and the founder Elian of Silicon Beach, who has been a friend of mine for years in Costa Rica, we had worked on some real estate stuff together. He invited me and and said, "Oh, you really got to come to this. We've got this guy here. He's a genius. He's starting his own cryptocurrency, and I'm going to be a partner, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And so, so I went to it, and this guy was talking it was explained blockchain for the first time i i had somebody actually patiently explain it he was really he was a really smart guy he explained it from the beginning all about bitcoin the history why it was why it worked you know why it was really important and why they uh, what they were doing and what they were doing was making it so it was basically creating a bitcoin that would be all done with links and be built into the browser so you could just click a link you would have all your coins right there built into the browser and one of the partners was like the head of of security for the biggest security, like cyber security institute in Germany. Um, his name was Philip, and um, and so it was quite it was quite an impressive team. And so about halfway through the whole thing, I raised my hand and and I and I said, "How do I invest in this? I, I want to invest mm -hmm. right now." <laughs> and everybody in the audience laughed, and, and he said, "Well, you know, we can get to that at the end of it." And I, and I said, "No, really, I, like I'm serious. I will go home right now." And I will get ten thousand dollars in cash and bring it and give it to you. <laughs> and everybody laughed again and stuff. And and at the end, but at the end of it, everybody said he said anybody that wants to invest, you know, let me know afterwards. And and then I, as soon as it was over, he walked over to me and he said, Jeff, you know, since so you're the first one to ask, I want you to be our first investor. And so I was. I was the first investor in Nimic, except for maybe Elian, who but he was also a co-founder of it. And so I went and I literally gave, I pulled out a bag of cash that I got out that I had from my, wow. from my, um, I don't remember where I had it from, but I had a bag of cash and I gave him cash, like on the spot, like in a brown bag on the beach in Costa Rica. And so like with, with no contract or anything, I don't think, and I gave it, but I gave it to Ellie. And so I, and I still have it. So they launched Nimic and we watched them raise like $12 million in like three hours. And this is in 2017, like in May. And, and, um, and, but before they actually did the launch, I invited the founder that had given that talk over and he stayed with me at my, at my yoga center. No, actually at my eco village. And we talked all the time about this. And I had a whole list of things that I thought he should do to make it even more user friendly. And, and there were things like, I mean, these are things I invented in my head, right? Like things I wanted, like, let's get rid of these addresses and have addresses where you can choose your own name for an address and these kinds of things. And, and it was interesting because his reaction was like, he was just really not that interested in these kind of ideas. And so Chris Moy, who was my, my, my SEO friend, um, who ended up being like the, the marketing guy for Nimic, he invested as well. He came to me and said, you know what? But these guys are they're too techy like they don't understand like human behavior and, and stuff and and, and he mm -hmm. said i don't you know I'm, I'm invested in stuff but we should do our own thing and we should do something that's more focused on on um like making things user friendly because you because you're right jeff because we talked a lot about it and we thought we saw we saw a lot of things that they were doing that wouldn't work we didn't think would really get them to where they wanted to be, where they needed to be and so so I said, no, I don't want to do that. I have this perfect life in Costa Rica, you know, you know, you know, people are, you know, I'm safe, you know, I'm, I'm running a yoga center. I've eating organic food, you know, everything's great. Why would I want to get into all this and, and be involved with a tech startup to that level and stuff. So, and then like a few weeks later, he calls me, he's like, we're doing it, Jeff. Like we're doing it. Like my brother and I, uh, Kalani and and uh, we got like a whole team together. We're doing it, and like we want you in, like and so. And I was like, oh, what should I do? So I talked to my 
my wife at the time and I was like, I really want to do this. So like, I want to do it. And, and so we, so I was like, and they wanted, you know, they wanted me to be CEO cause I had all this business experience and I was sort of the oldest and more, most mature of the group. And so, but I was kind of like, I wasn't really the CEO. I was kind of like, they needed somebody with a title for marketing purposes, you know? And so, so then we had the situation where there was kind of like a committee. Nick was one of them. And, um, and I remember talking to Nick, like, a month in and like like Nick, like you're a really talented guy. Like I've met lots and lots of people in this, but you're the best guy on this team. And I've never seen anybody that has so many different talents. I like, was such a good writer for one. Like how many people like he really wrote well. He wrote better than I did. And, and he was young. And he, he could yeah. do all this stuff and, and he was charismatic and he was you know, he was handsome, great voice, intelligent, you know, just he had he had, you know. Yeah, every category, high level, you know, and so, so anyway, we started going through the whole thing. We called it Divi at the time, and then there ended up being a lot of disagreements with different people. It was really hard running it, running it by committee and stuff. But everybody decided to go with this idea, like let's make the world's most user friendly um, cryptocurrency and all those things, you know, that I had on my list. We added, and there plus there were more, and we ended up, you know, doing it. And three of the guys dropped out, and we added another one. And because they kind of, kind of didn't, I don't know, it's, there's a lot, a lot to it, but a lot of people just felt like it wasn't going to work. Everyone is stealing all our money. We got completely screwed by our developers. I don't know if people know all this, but like the developers. I share that story. Them, right? Yeah, we, we've shared the, <laughs> we have, we hired these, story. This, yeah. We hired this, Amer these American development team that were like literally led by a guy who was a top guy at Microsoft that had yeah. pitched personally, it's like 10 different projects um, to Bill Gates, you know, directly with Michael Greenwood, who was one of the, had become one of the partners of, of Divi at the time. And, and so we had this incredible development team. They were AI experts, et cetera, et cetera. And they were like, oh, we'll do this blockchain thing. And so they just basically they just sucked all of our money, all of our dev budget, all of our marketing budget as well and then when we went to the day of the launch it turned out they'd been lying it didn't to work us. <laughs> yeah it, it, been it didn't it wasn't that it didn't work they had never actually built all this stuff and they told us that it was ready and we were going to launch and they were completely yeah. lying and it was not there and then and they were hiding they were hiding everything they wouldn't show us the code they completely yep. scammed us basically um and it wasn't actually david the lead, the lead guy it was his partner this guy named mark who was lying and he was on apparently he was on meds and off his meds and all this kind of stuff <laughs> and um and he was he was having the whole team lie to us while they were trying to get everything together and and david didn't even seem to know because he was focused on like not going bankrupt himself and it was like it was this giant shit show of of lies and misinformation and bullshit that um so we basically ended up firing them and we looked into suing them and this whole thing, but we didn't have, we didn't have money, enough money to sue them. And so then Michael, Michael Greenwood was super embarrassed, like of what had happened. Cause he had brought in this team and, and he was being lied. He was being told by David, his former partner, that this is all good. And David was being lied to by Mark. And, um, and so nobody knew. And basically the same thing happened to us again with, with Casper like yeah a whole again like we said that we can never let this happen again and so we actually decided to hire casper who yeah. was a divvy guy we're figuring he has skin in the game you know yeah but the same thing happened anyway it was pretty amazing how that happened again so so then uh i think so then basically michael went and interviewed all these people and he hired the, the guys from belarus who we still kind of have working for us and we hired the guy that built our blockchain and this guy that built the blockchain built it in six weeks for sixty thousand dollars, compared with six hundred and fifty thousand dollars with a team of like ten people that weren't able to do it, you know. And he did it in six weeks in his spare, and he did it in his spare time. He was he was he was the CTO of another Masternode coin, <clears throat> and wow. um, and he did it in his spare time. He's a he's a genius, and he's still you know he's a amazing guy. He still has got his team in in Kiev and Ukraine and and really saved our asses, you know? And um, and we launched, we were able to launch it and had all this great tech in it, you know? And it all worked. The, the problem for us was that when we actually launched, there was two bugs in the swap 
contract, swapping from DivX to Divi, and it made us and it made our team lose all of our um, the team tokens that we had to try to, to launch, and we had to put in seventeen thousand Divi or seventeen million Divi. I put in ten million. Michael Greenwood put in six, and 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 Nick put in one because he didn't have as much, and. Um, and so we put that in to try to make everybody whole. And that was because what was happening is that Divi was getting lost and other people were getting doubled up. And so some people end up with like double the Divi. And it was one of these things where like none of that happened in testing. But then when we went to go actually do it, when thousand people tried to all get their coins at once, certain things broke down, right? So it's that um, smart contract, exactly. And it, I think yeah, it's so, really good that you talk about it because I don't think it was talked about and especially not since a long time. And yeah. I think people don't realize that for, for a coin to exist, there is a lot of things happening in the background and yeah. crypto is a very, um, it's an industry with full of scammers and yeah. in the, in the life exactly. of a project, unfortunately they get scammed a lot. And they have with very small budget, a very small team, usually very dedicated people who are carrying yeah. all the things on their back. And it, and usually people don't talk about that because you don't want to show that you, you want to show weakness, right? Exactly. But, but in, in reality, like it is how the project like move forward, unless they got dozens of millions, which most projects didn't then it is it is the normal path and it is a very difficult one i think i think yeah. i want to add that the you know the takeaway from this because i i was there when this happened i was a i was part of the community and part of the group i wasn't as close to nick or jeff yet i was in the beta testing team the most important thing that's early and we did experience those issues with the code from that original team I think that if we kind of sweep all the problems aside and we look at what happened, we have a team that 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 lied originally. That uh, I didn't, well, they have the money, so they they consumed the resources of the blockchain, and then you get to this point to where you have people now volunteering their time. I know, I know that uh, that it that when you talk about funding of the new blockchain, you took that out of your own pocket, and I know that Nick worked for free for a very, very, very long time, and then you also have people who who some people have heard of them called the beta bashers who helped Yuri and helped the people and helped those teams. And everybody volunteered and pitched in because they believed in crypto made easy. So we have this, this, this group that kind of grifts off of the, the beginning birth of what was to be crypto made easy. They eat it and it could have died and it's through really Jeff, you making it all possible because even if all the volunteers and even all the people putting their time, if there wasn't a blockchain we could start working on and testing and driving and and pushing forward, it we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all the things you put into it. That's all I'm gonna say. It it, it you you could have walked away, but we're now 2024 and you're still here. You're still putting in time and you're still promoting it. You may be on other projects, but you're still pushing Divi and <laughs> you got hosed. And so did Nick and so did Michael in those early days. So, Rob, I think your uh, mic is off. I don't know if you're talking, but um, yeah, I just wanted to say that I think most people don't know that story that you got slammed and were left with a an empty bag. Yeah, yeah, there so, were many there were many there were many times where I like sold a property for like $150,000 and I would take all the money and then try to buy Divi while it was falling cuz some asshole was like dumping on us or some or somebody got hacked and then a diamond node was getting dumped and I would try to protect the price and I lost so much money doing that. Probably just doing that alone is probably a million dollars, you know. Wow. And Wow. And then, 
and it, and also when we went on, we had no money, right? When we launched Divi, and so I put in seven seven point five Bitcoin for liquidity for the for the um, for market, you know, for market making, and yeah, so that we would have a market, right? The Divi had right. zero dollar. We had no Divi and no cash either. <laughs> we, had, we were at zero. <laughs> in both, Good times. Both, right? <laughs> so, and, but we had, but we had the block rewards and we knew that because of the block rewards and we really believed in the tokenomics we had built, I still think it's the best tokenomics in the world with the stake, yeah. with the staking tiers. Um, and nobody does, I think it would, right now the entire um, launch pad industry is, has an, is in an existential crisis. Every single coin they launch crashes because they have bad and they, it's because in my opinion they have bad tokenomics if tokenomics if they had divi's tokenomics it would give people an incentive to hold and to buy and to lock up coins more long term and this in this gamification that we that we did works really well and we're going to be doing that for the lightning works coin what we're calling web 3e for web 3 entertainment and for the the horde token that we do for the games interactive ecosystem so um and everything basically everything we're doing with these other tokens we give divi equal status right so for example if you're holding divi you get bonuses in the ecosystem so we're always thinking in terms of getting keeping divi alive and getting it to return i believe someday that all these legacy coins that are still kept alive are going to come back that like vintage is always really cool there will be times <laughs> yeah. where it's where it's like the cool thing to like pump up and buy up and pump up older coins that have been around that still have active teams but are really low price and so at some point divi i think will come back and, and because the the most valuable thing a coin has it's is to have a passionate community that's literally emotionally stupidly attached to it which we all are <laughs> so <laughs> that's right it's, and it's and it's, having you, know, you talking about that i think is important including for our community because like we talked about the the first the first days, like the initial times of Divi, but but then also there is a time where you stopped being the figurehead of Divi, and it's important for everyone to understand that it's not it's not because you left Divi, right? Yeah. Like everything you built after everything you were also included. You've all always been involved in everything, and and I think you were just trying to let Nick have his own direction and. You, you were not trying to be like in in the middle of that um and but in fact you've always been around you've always been um helping dv all along so i think it's important for everyone because we had some question here where is jeff uh oh we have because you know dv went through um happy days and bad days during during all this period and obviously yeah. um they we have a lot of people who really and and i think all of the DVOGs um, have really a very strong, um, you know, love for Jeff, the CEO of Divi, the founder of exactly. Divi, right? The so founder, that's yeah. why it re was really important to to have you and then talk about those moments. And I mean, we'll talk about all the things that you're building on now with the lightning works and all of that. As I said, you're very busy and and how it impacts Divi. I think it, it is really interesting to give some perspective to yeah. people because they don't necessarily go to lightning works or uh, look around what's happening so the second part of the story that you know the second era of divi is actually really interesting and i've never told it um you know in, in a forum like this i could tell you that you guys may be very interested to kind of like what really happened with like me leaving divi and what was going on what was the thinking behind it where nick, nick took, took over People may be curious as to what happened there, and I'm willing to talk about it if you're if you yeah. want to hear it. Sure, Always. yeah, sure. <laughs> so we had hired a guy named Karthik who was in Singapore, and we paid him like sixty thousand dollars in an advisor um, to try to introduce us to a lot of a lot of VCs there. And also, he I personally paid him like another I think sixty thousand dollars out of my own pocket to try to help me start the, I forget now what we call it, Divi Ventures. Oh, it was Divi Ventures, right? And he was gonna bring people that wanted to build on Divi, Divi. And I set up, you know, and I was gonna pay people with my own Divi and was trying to get people, other people to back it, you know, with cash, with Divi. I don't know if you guys remember, but I was, I had a whole list at one point of people that were willing to put in some Divi, put in cash, 
to try to build Divi Ventures so we could get people building stuff on Divi because he was saying, right. Jeff, because you know, this happened after he met with so many VCs and he was like, oh, I've got these really great founders. I got this really cool project. They have a really cool sto you know, story. They've got their own chain. It's doing, you know, it's gone, it's gone up a lot, you know, um, and he was, but everybody said the same thing. It was the same thing. He met with so many different family offices in Singapore and they all said the same thing. They said, you don't have an ecosystem. Like you have to have an ecosystem. Like who's building on Divi? What's being built on Divi? You know, he said, Jeff, you've got to get that done. And if you can't do it, nobody's going to invest in Divi. And you have to have a bunch of stuff that's being built on Divi to show off. It can't just mm -hmm. be a chain because things are moving to this sort of, at the time it was like, oh, EVM, like nobody knew what EVM was, but yeah. the, the people started talking about it. Things are starting to move towards Ethereum and, 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 and we thought that was kind of weird. Like Solidity was such a pain in the ass thing, but you know, we <laughs> watched, you know, everybody knew about the, about how Betamax is better than than VHS, but it, yeah. the VHS won anyway, because it had more marketing and more momentum, right? So we need to get in, get this momentum going. And so, and everybody was saying, Jeff, you nobody knows about Divi. You've got to tr go and go to all the conferences, you know? You've got to go, you've got to meet people, you've got to get people interested. It's all about, it's all about founders, all about knowing people, meeting people, having people know. There's conferences all over the world, you know? Nick and I had gone to a couple, we went to, we went to a few, I flew to California for one. Um, and every, every time we went, we met a few cool people, right? We went, we went to, we, we didn't want to buy the tickets and at, at consensus New York, but we went there and, and just hung out in the lobby with like 2000 other people that, that didn't mm -hmm. want to buy tickets. It's pretty mm -hmm. funny. We just met all these people and we we're having dinners with different people that we met. It was, and we thought, oh, there's really something to this, you know? And, Interesting. And that's, so I guess that's how the side events done. came to be. Because now every yeah, time now, you have a convention, you have dozens of side events around. So yeah. I guess it was dozens, the beginning of that. Now. Yeah, yeah, hundreds. Of, yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Interesting. And we met all kinds of people. And I remember we walked out of one of them at one point and And right there, standing there was like, God, it was like Jesse Jackson and <laughs> and Morgan Freeman. There was all these like world famous, like black celebrities and politicians there was some sort of conference going on like next door or something and so nick got pictures <laughs> with them and sent them to his mom <laughs> it was really cool and we were like how do we get them into divi you know yeah. we we're always thinking like that you know? <laughs> and so it was pretty cool and and then uh so then basically what happened was my wife and i split up and and i had i had become we had an advisor to Divi, I don't know if you guys know this, but it was Nehemia Kramer, who was the first investor in Ethereum. And he was really helping us. He was starting to introduce me to people and stuff. And he's like, Jeff, you got to travel. You got to come to Puerto Rico, all this kind of stuff. And he and I had done a deal where I would get a, a whole bunch of, of um, Polkadot. He was one of the like sort of co-founding team. He was an advisor to Polkadot and he's really good friends with Gavin. And um, <clears throat> and he had, he, they used to call him Ethereum, uh, uh, Vic, Vitalik's uncle was kind of his nickname <laughs> in the early days and um, when he got into crypto and and he'd never made any money off of Ethereum, but he'd made money. It was he was doing really well with Polkadot. And so I ended up ending up with a bunch of Polkadot and I was getting these Polkadot stakes. So I was able to travel at the time. And um, so I thought, you know, my wife and I broke up. I'm just going to start traveling. I'm going to travel all over the world, introducing people to Divi. Um, and so I did, I started, I kind of, I was, I was going back and forth between Costa Rica to basically see my daughter and then going to Puerto Rico, which actually rented a penthouse for like a penthouse with like five rooms thinking, you know, I'm going to build like a really cool spot where everyone's going to be there. We're going to have all these parties and, and kind of make it part of the scene. Cause I used to throw all these parties in college, and everybody would come and, and um, we actually had Nirvana played in our, one of our parties once at Evergreen. <laughs> it's actually, it was actually a legendary thing that's part of Nirvana's history where they literally destroyed the building. Like the, there were so wow. many people in the building at their concert in my apartment that it actually put a crack through the entire building and they had, wow. they had to condemn it. <laughs> you, it was, you, know, um, you know how I know about that story? I heard about it from your sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's part of it's part of like rock history. Like I was part of making rock it history. Is. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna go to Puerto Rico and I'm gonna do the same thing. And so I 
I tried to rent this this um, this be this oceanfront huge restaurant space, and I was gonna like make like, like make it like the coolest place to be, where everybody would be there, because all these people from all over the world were flying in constantly into Puerto Rico, because Brock and Michael Turpin and all these people were there, and so I went there. So I went there, and I got into I got. I got to speak at Crypto Mondays. I was so nervous, but I basically told them the whole story of what, what had happened. And there were only like 12 people there, unfortunately. But some mm -hmm. of them were, were important people in the space and they really liked, liked what I had to say, that how, the way I had sort of poured my heart out about what had happened to us. And they were really excited about it and they liked me. So so a lot of people kind of helped started advising and became kind of Divi fans. And, and a few people bought it and a few people tried to buy it, but they couldn't figure out how. And so... So then Nehemi introduced me to this guy named named Sergey, who's now the he was a, the founder of Waterfall, which is in my opinion the best blockchain in the world. And um, and he said, you know, you guys need what Divi needs is a CTO like Sergey. And so and so Sergey and I and Nehemi worked out a deal where Sergey where Sergey um, would become the CTO of Divi, and and Divi would basically take sort of somewhat ownership of of waterfall the waterfall project and it would become a divi thing and we could move divi onto a waterfall and divi would have the best blockchain in the world and so sergey and i went and presented this to nick and and josh and some of the other team and they said no they didn't want to do it because they'd had all you know they only had so many resources they didn't know this sergey guy and they were really wanted to go into DeFi, and they were building all these things and it was just they couldn't do everything you know so they had to kind of choose and they wanted to do what they were already planning and i was really pissed nehemi was really pissed literally he was screaming <laughs> he was like fuck divi divi sucks <laughs> like he was screaming i mean he was like screaming you know he was so mad that they didn't see the opportunity you know to have the, this guy who was the best genius in the entire blockchain space as our CTO and make Divi the best chain in the world. And, um, and you know, and part of it's, you know, it just didn't happen for whatever reason, it didn't happen. And I understand why the decision was made. But at that time, and at that time I was trying to basically, I really wanted to save Divi and I wanted this to happen. And I had all these really famous people that were like starting, that all knew about Divi. I mean, Brock Pierce, all these people knew about Divi and, and the deal, didn't, the deal didn't happen. And it would have changed everything for Divi, of course, if that had happened. Um, but there probably would have been a whole new set of drama, drama like there always of is, course. right? And, of course. and But the thing is, at the time, Nehemia was backing us and Nehemia was doing the party place of the legendary party place of Puerto Rico, where people, every big deal in crypto at the time was getting made at his house. You know, all these humongous deals, they were all there. Everybody was there that was flying into Puerto Rico. They were all at his parties. And and a few of you, a few of the, I don't remember who, I think Rob, you know, you were there at his place a few times, so you know what I'm talking about, but it was- I, I've been to his place, it, but we were, we were all getting tested for COVID, frankly. <laughs> yeah, that was all, all happening during COVID. There were so many legendary parties that I was, it was all during COVID, right? There's, and um, I actually got COVID the second time at Brock Pierce's birthday party, which, which, um, <laughs> Where everybody there, almost everybody there, got it, and um, but there were so many stories from that time and and stuff. So that didn't that didn't happen for Divi. So at that time, I thought, you know what, I like I didn't really believe in this DeFi thing that that Nick and Josh wanted to do. I thought it was too late. I did bring in the the head the the head of Celsius's DeFi. He was a he was there actually living with with um Nehemi at the time, and so he offered to help us and introduce us when we launched our, you know, EDV and all this, he was going to bring in all of these people, right? They're all the top people in DeFi and stuff. But before that could happen, everything got de delayed. Before that thing got happened, he quit Celsius because he saw all the bad shit that mm -hmm. was going down right. and he didn't want to be part of it. And um, so he left Celsius and then DeFi kind of blew up. So that never really happened. But we had another really good opportunity for Divi DeFi. Um, and there were people, I mean, there were people that were talking about bringing in tens of millions of dollars at the time that had met me, that had met Nick and all this stuff. But that didn't happen because of, again, things out of our control. Um, but this is one of these things, like in the crypto space, you have to get lucky, but you can also make your own luck. But you can't make your own luck by sitting behind your computer. You have to be out right. there at these exactly. parties and meeting all these people, right? It's just 
doesn't work. You have to meet people face to face and spend time with them, spend time again with them, and then spend time again and again and again, you know, and meet them all over the world and hang out with them at these yacht parties and and, and weasel your way into yacht the, parties. Yacht, the yacht parties. You know? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not right. my world. <laughs> I, it, it's crazy. Like I've been going to these uh, con, you know conventions and events ever since uh, July. I got yeah. another one next month, and yeah, it, like this one of the events is on a cruise around down a down a down a river, and uh, yeah, that's where you got to go. And that's it's where really the people are, and, the, and, every, <laughs> and everyone says like the way to make it work, you've got to bring a bunch of your like twenty something genius super fans with you. You bring them, and then they meet everybody. They stay up. They have the energy to stay up all night. <laughs> And yeah. and you know and 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 do all the drugs that everybody's doing, you know, all these kind of crazy it's, things that are going on. I, and I'm too old for this shit, you know. Yeah. Like I want to go to bed at <laughs> one in the morning. It's already way too late for me. And some of these parties, especially <laughs> in Europe, are just getting started, right? So, so so anyway. But I'm you know I'm still trying to do it when I can, you know. And now I know all these people in Dubai, and, and I've spoken at many many of these things. So I've never got into the Asian scene i kind of need to do that but now i'm just kind of out of money right all my money is yeah. going into development and stuff and um but that's kind of what happened and so so i just started focusing on lightning work trying to and, and doing a video game i was like nick i'll build a video game i'm gonna do comics which nobody's doing and i'll involve divvy with all of this and you run you run this and so then the la liga thing happened and, and everything was going really well but the um <clears throat> they finally you know they got the DeFi thing they got Divi launched onto the EVM system, which was so important. From that, we could bring it to Waterfall or whatever chain. With this sort of X Divi project, Divi everywhere, we could bring Divi could be wherever we needed it to be. Whatever the cool chain is of the month, which is literally what's happening now, Divi can bridge to it, and we can be part of the hype. You know, we're still trying think, to get there. And, and so, I, I think it's a very important thing that um, you switch to. Like basically, for a long time, you were. Um, at the head of this project, making sure it was moving forward. And then at some point, you really were at the source of most of the partners, we can, we can really say, right? DVGo, Lightning Works, Siege Words, um, Go Bank, uh, more recently, like basically, um, because we had a lot of uh, communication about that in the last few months about how it works in the crypto industry, where you have this decentralized project and then there needs to be partners who have basically their own existence, their own uh, priorities, but then try to bring DV into their journey so that the whole project kind of expands uh, in all directions. And I think you really have been the, the engine for most of the development of that around DV. Yeah. Well, so I think I still think that the the way we're do we're doing things it makes a lot of sense. It, there's so much value in having a high quality old blockchain that's never gone down, you know, that's been around since 2018 now. And then we bridge that to the EVM world so we can have Divi anywhere and everywhere. Everything's going into more and more better bridges and, and that gives us ability to build use cases. And so the question really becomes the why, like, why not just, and people ask that all the time, even, you know, Nick and I have these discussions, why don't we just give up Divi and go and just do these other things? And, and But that's what it really comes down to. <clears throat> First of all, you have the most valuable thing a cryptocurrency can have is a community of really of fanatics like that Divi has. And that's worth, that's priceless. It is so difficult to build that. I've watched so many people try to create coins and they fail in building what divi has been able to build where we have guys like you that are still still doing this and still passionate about it and you know they're invested for a long time and you're you're financially invested but more importantly you're emotionally invested it becomes part of your identity that you that you're a divi guy you know and you want this to work and it becomes fun you have this team of people that and it's you know it's it's a, there's a camaraderie where you've gone through all this together you know, you talk about people that have gone through World War II or Vietnam, and they sit around for the rest of their lives rehashing the right. old days and, and talking about that. That's the, very much the way it is when you build a successful inner core team for a cryptocurrency that is so impossible to, like, replicate on purpose. And Divi has that, and so that's worth so much. So finding ways, the rest of it's just tech and some money, and those are actually a lot easier. So because we have that core fundamental and we have 
this very long successful history of never rug pulling, never scamming, a docs team, <clears throat> things are known about Divi that is so valuable. And so if we could just keep working at it, there's a, if it's not even the next, this bull run, it may be the next one. If we don't give up, eventually I believe Divi will go to a, will become a, a, a billion dollar coin because things always come back around and these, and the longer these kind of things have been around without dying, fully dying, the more valuable and potential they have when they become the cool, the cool thing again. And um, so, yeah, so that's kind of where I am and, and talking with, with Nick too, like he's still like, his old plan is like, he's going to make, get rich doing something else and then pour money back into Tiffany again. <laughs> like, like you come, <laughs> you come very attached to this kind of thing. Right. And then, and um, you become attached and, and it's fun. It's fun to have something that you really, truly love and care about. It's, it means a lot to have that in your, in your brain and, and as part of your life. And you don't want to give that up. It's not easy to move it on, to just move on. And why should you? It's fun. It's fun to have it, you know, so. Yeah, and, and I think that DV has some particular things that see for us and the sidechain direction. It is, um, it is actually an ideal core. Like while all the industry went into that EVM thing, um, look, we we really uh, welcome all that. Like it, it brought a lot of um, new technology and new utility to blockchain. So it's really great. However, it went through uh, like some, we consider some um, bad choices, like more custody, um, definitely yeah. a lot less trustless mechanism because it needed to move forward. And that's why um, all those EVMs are going for the fastest, going for, uh, let's say, the most capable. But then, of course, they, they have to get rid or uh, minimize the the big thing that for us was always the big thing, right? Which is self-custody, a trustless mechanism. And so having a, U a UTXO blockchain like the DV1 is actually a wonderful yeah. base to be able to then connect exactly. sidechains to it. It's a much safer um, model. And as the utility is now offloaded to the sidechains, you don't need to have this, you know, magic EVM on the main chain that is you know, making terabyte of data. So you can have like a lightweight uh, main chain that is now basically your security layer. And now all your services, all your utilities going on service chain right. that can just pop up and die as the, the needs, you know, evolve, right? Um, and so yeah. that for us, it's great too, because look. So, yeah, yeah, I yeah was, go ahead. I was just at the meeting. I've become friends with the CEO of Saga chain and you know they have that what they call chainlets they're based they're built from um from uh the cosmos ecosystem and they have and she and one of the things she said is that we at saga believe that in the future every big company will have their own chain and but they need to be connected with other ones and so and we've been saying this for we've been saying this for a while right like and so what I think that what's cool about what the side chains project is, is that I think it's the, the world's best way to do that. And I very strongly believe that every, every big company, anybody that wants to have a big company will want to have their own chain and, and needs yeah. to have their own chain because you don't want some other people coming in and pushing your gas prices up or locking yeah, up all your blocks and this kind yeah, of stuff. That's true. Yeah. And so, so doing that in the right way, I think is, is essential. And so, Telling that story in the right way is really good, and the difficult the difficulty is, I think, is the investment environment right now. That people don't invest in good ideas; they invest in traction, and they invest in hype, right? And so, this project has to kind of get there, right? Where it, where it has enough, where it has the tech built, or it has enough traction, or it has enough hype, so that people can do it, and that somehow, and and they don't want an old, they don't want a legacy coin. They don't want to invest in Divi. They want to invest in the new thing, and so. You have to find a way to connect Divi with these with these other coins. So that's what, like what I'm doing. Right. Like even though we're doing our Web three E coin, there you get advantages to your Web three E if you also have Divi. Um, and so that's the I think the way to make it to make it. That's work right. That's right. It is the path because in crypto, um, new investors 
they like to have a project that is old and that has been reliable. However, yeah. um, most of it is still speculation and they don't want to go in a coin that is held by so many people if it if it there is not like a huge thing to compensate for that yeah and it is very difficult to make something um you know grow out of that and so that's why growing it through a side project that is basically going to bring that fresh uh that fresh side right and then linking it to dv so that dv can benefit all along and that's also the the strategy that we have with the partner. And I think this is really the the best kind of thing that can happen to Divi. So let let's talk a little bit about uh, maybe lining words, the thing that you have uh, that you have um, you know working on. Um, I remember you have partnership with uh, Skill. You have a lot of things on Siege Words. So maybe uh, we can start on that. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot to do to, to talk about with that. Um, I guess the first thing is that. I hope within two weeks we'll be launching Starblind number one, which is incredible comic book. If I shared it with you guys, I don't know if you've got the chance to see it. We have like a version you can see it, but it's it's about 60 pages, um, 45 pages of story, 15 pages of like kind of backstory, characters, all kinds of cool stuff, video. There's all kinds of stuff that's built into this comic book. It really shows like the potential of what a comic book can be and how you can build a whole nice. world around within a single comic book and 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 each one has it will have its own cover um there's tiers of covers you can forge them we're going to do we're, we're launching it that on scale and then shortly afterwards on saga um because they're both really really good teams that have really good um just they have really good support and i mean they just do it's weird like they just do the basics like getting back to you when you contact them you know, <laughs> like like nobody else does that. I, I, it's kind of weird to say that, but like yeah. none of these other teams, I've, I've interviewed with probably 20 layer ones. No other chains like respond on a timely basis, get you information. They don't have information to send you. If you ask them for stuff, they've never haven't bothered to like create a PDF with, with their information. It's always just like <laughs> they've got these really young people who are really smart, but they don't know anything about anything except their chain, you know? And they've right. never worked in another business, and 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 they're just so into like sort of the crypto and DeFi hole, and this ecosystem, this sort of echo chamber of an ecosystem, it's really hard to work with them. And so, and so, and Scale and Saga have really good teams of people that know that know something outside of blockchain, and so that's what we wanted to end up releasing with them. We actually tried to release on Core, and and Polygon, but couldn't get like their teams to like do all the stuff that they said they were going to do. And so we ended up botching, it wasn't botching, we just put off the launch. You know, we built the whole thing to launch on, on Polygon. Then they just stopped responding to emails. And they're in, they're in I think, in, in a big trouble right now. The coin price has just been going down. And then the same thing happened with Core. We went to launch and then it didn't happen. We all of a sudden they weren't giving us the support that they said. And so, like, we'll we'll, go, we'll try with scale now. And so now we have scale and the saga, and then probably narrow after that. And these are people where, like, I know the teams really well. You know, I've met them personally, and 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 have access, you know, to like the C, the CEOs and top people that respond, right? And um, and they see the the potential. Like, they want mainstream users, and they love the fact that we've built all this stuff into Telegram and in WhatsApp. They see the potential there. So, so yeah. So we plan to re release. Uh, we plan to release um, Starline number one, the comic, and you can buy it with Divi. And within the comic, there'll be a page where you can get gum. And so with gum, that's a whole <laughs> NFT set. And so our gum thing, it's this crazy idea that I think it's like, it's either the stupidest idea ever or the, or the best. It's one of these things. That, and um, But gum is basically the, the opposite of like Bored Apes. Gum is gonna be like 50 cents for an NFT, right? And but the idea is to buy them in mass, to buy them in packs, and you can unwrap them. And there's 30 different tiers of of scarcity. Of scarcity, you have a one in a billion chance of getting tier 30. No one, all the all the arts encrypted, so you're not going to know what they are until somebody gets them. And you can forge them. So if you have two commons, like with our comics, you yeah. can forge them up to scale. We've already found that this is really addicting. People really want to try to get the other one. So I said, let's just right. maximize that idea and have 30 tiers. So it was a 
it's a lot of work, but I created the art for 30 different pieces of gum. And then there's like stickers that come that are on that are on the wrappers and there's other stuff that we can add to it. And basically if you get these comics, you can go to the gum machine. Actually, it's going to be a claw machine where you have tokens where you buy the claw <laughs> or you try the claw machine, you try to grab the gum and you never know how much you're going to get. And so basically you just get this gum in mass, but then you're always forging. And so we're, we're doing the lar the world's largest NFT set. It's going to be a hundred million and it's going to be on scale. And then we'll do the same on Saga. And then, um, and the idea is to try something very different and you can get this inside the comic books. You can buy it with Divi. Um, and if you own a certain amount of Divi, you're, when you forge, you have a better chance to go up higher. So we found that this is the most addicting and most exciting nice. part of the whole ecosystem that people like to forge. They like to try to get the higher things. It becomes a use case in itself, just trying to get the higher ones because people like to collect stuff. There's no use case for like collecting cards, right? You know, or and it is, and it is chasing, chasing the higher rare level is uh, what a lot yeah. of games actually rely on. It's a mechanic that is really extremely addictive. Right. You really want it's those a... rare things, so it, it is, it is really nice. I think you also mentioned because I know a lot of um, a lot of our DV users uh, hold uh, portal um, and things, like, and I remember you were mentioning that they will also have a role in that. Yeah, so if you so if you have a portal, you're going to get free gum every single day. So you just nice. have to, you have to have to go to the portal, click the gum button, and you're going to get it. And if you have like a common, you'll get one. And if you have a if you have an uncommon, you get two. It goes up like that up to sixteen. So one, two, four, eight, sixteen. If there's only one legendary portal right now, so he's going to get sixteen gum every day, right? And so oh. you can either then sell that packaged, or you can unpackage it and then start forging it. So that's going to give a cool use case for having the portals. Um, and because we're giving away, a, you know, because there's a hundred millions of these gum gums out there. Um, <clears throat> we can kind of just give it away in mass. And so, like I said, nobody's done anything like this with NFTs before. And we know, I mean, everybody we talk to that really knows game mechanics and stuff is like, this is going to be, could be huge. Right. And when people find out that they can improve their chances of forging, which by owning more Divi or it'll be Skivvy in this case, so Divi's forged to, or uh, bridge to scale, um, then it makes it, it gives another use case for Divi, right. And a reason for people right. to do it. We just, have to make sure that the liquidity is there so people can actually acquire the skivvy to be able to do it and so that's one of the things you're working on i've actually i reached out to the community the dev the divi dev community like i need somebody to like do this because i don't have time to do it nobody on our team does so i kept hoping to find somebody so far nobody stood up and offered to like kind of be in charge of skivvy but if you guys can find me somebody it would it would help this you know because well let's see if there's... somebody listening to this wants to help help out with that yeah you know, like an opportunity yeah, I think, like, I think can... potentially look with J uh, Josh and all that. I think I think it's a matter of understanding what is the scope of that, and and again, it's all about it's always about money. So <laughs> it's always. Well, I think insane. I think the biggest takeaway that I get, well, you you do mention it, it's always about money, but I think that the the biggest takeaway that I I have heard, and maybe because I've heard it before, is that you're trying to build all sorts of features and functions currently right now building externally to bring it back so there's a utility and i think if we go back even just maybe uh, a few years ago when we were chatting there was so much you wanted to put on it and neegs you mentioned it a utxo blockchain i mean how do you do comic books how do you do nfts you can't really do that adequately on let's say bitcoin litecoin divi or whatever that would be a utxo blockchain and i think that's so you you instead of you have crypto made easy and then you have these utility functions you want to bring into it and you have all these wonderful ideas that were coming but we ha had to upgrade the blockchain do all these kinds of things and the answer is side chains right that's where that's where you can start to bring all the beautiful ideas that you have for utility, right? We have crypto made easy, then we have the utility. And then we can then integrate with side chains, any blockchain that wants to, to participate or wants to integrate. 
um, all the wonderful ideas that you have. And so just like um, uh, instead of isolating it, getting it stuck one place, because Divi everywhere should be everywhere, um, but on one chain, but then all chains can then integrate into like that side chain ecosystem. So you have one place, but it can be representative in other places. Um, all right. the different things you have, the comics are just one because it's big in my head. You couldn't build the comics. You had to build them, you know, Polygon, or you had to build them on uh, Ethereum. You had to build them as you built them because that was the ecosystem that was only acceptable. Sidechains brings it all back to Divi. So we're then having external utility to try to focus and use the Divi. And now we're going the other way where Divi then becomes the utility. It's been a long road. It's still it's still in the making, but um, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and that was the, the, the idea of Divi Everywhere from whenever I kind of first wrote it out in 2019, 2020, I realized that the world was going to be multi-chain. And so the best way to take advantage of that is to make sure that Divi could be part of every cool new thing, you know? Exactly. When all of a sudden, when all of a sudden base is the big thing, how do we get Divi up into it, you know? Like, so, so this idea of Divi everywhere was, I thought, really cool. And because we saw like Bitcoin was, people were taking Bitcoin and they were, they were bridging it to everything else, right? Well, so, and so we saw that and like, well, Divi should do that and Divi should do it even more. If we just focus on that one thing and Divi was everywhere, it would start to create its own value by being everywhere, as long as there's a way to pass one Divi to the next. And that's why one of the reasons that I created GoBank, right? I, I realized in order to make that easy, I needed to have basically pools of all the different types of Divi and have a money transmitters license so people could easily swap from one to the other without going through all of these steps to get from one to the other. And so, and and so now, and now we have this great way because we're going to be integrating Divi Swap. I actually just got the APIs from Nick, from Nick yesterday um, into GoBank. That means that people will be able to, to drop out of any type of Divi into 50, 50 states in the United States, which is really hard, right? And it's the only technology we know of that can do that. Um, it's easier to get Europe and the rest of the world compared to getting all 50 states in the US. And so people will be able to just, you know, it, it makes it easier to create liquidity when people know that at any moment they can just bring the money into their bank account, um, then people are more likely to want to use it. But if you tell people like, oh, you got to, you know, got to transfer to do this and you got a bridge and you got to go over here and do that, and then you got to sell it. And, and it's, and it's all exactly. these steps to, to them that feels impossible, you know? So making making everything impossible. really easy and, and one one click, you know, we're we're still, you know, we've always had the same vision since 2019 and we're still putting it all together. You know, it's just not happening with like Jeff and Nick at the top of the of the top of the pyramid, you know. It's actually happening in a much better way where people there's a whole bunch of people working <laughs> on different projects that are all targeting exactly. things that are still really important um that need to be solved. And and in some cases, meme coins the advent of meme coins is making it harder in some ways to get money, but it's also making it better. While everybody's focusing on their, on meme coins, we're actually still solving and putting all the technology together in many different places to make all of this viable. Right. And at some point, Divi can just break out again, you know? That's, I think Divi will break out when, we're, when, we, when we start moving in that direction. That, that, that is great. Yeah. Utility, as we know, is something that's missing on so many great ideas so many chains yeah. that's um i think you mentioned that right i think that's when we have ideas to to do things it's right. it's what do you do with it when you're there well it needs a utility and side chains well, is wholly solely about utility yeah and i, mean, I think you kind of also, want two different types of utility you want a utility where people are constantly using it on a daily basis so there's movement but you also want it utility where people are grabbing and locking up long-term um, Divi so that there's less, there's more and more scarcity, right? So, so there are two different types, 
kind of classes of use case that are really important. That's right. You need to incentives focus. to hold, right? And staking is one big one with DV, but definitely uh, being able to uh, get like basically the NFTs that you would do or being able to have some uh, incentive when playing siege words or whatever you get when you are on the other side of that bridge is really what incentivizes to have some DV. And I think it was always also the ID between uh, eDV, the DV ERC20, but, exactly. but also all those things require a, a lot of money to be able to build all those things. And so having already the bridge, having already the ability to go there is already kind of a big step. And once we are able to get more eyes on DV, then it is a lot simpler for anyone who would want to build those things to basically use the DV that they have on the ecosystem they are, they are the most familiar with, right? Until we get to the yeah. sidechain model where everything is interoperable. Until then, like basically people have their favorite platforms, they have their ideas and they'll not just move to another. Um, one of the barrier we had with EDV is that obviously it's great to be on Ethereum, but no one builds on Ethereum anymore. It's, it's just too expensive with the fees. And so having now the ability to use that EDV to be like a bridge to SKDV or SADV or whichever DV awesome? now gets gets created is is also like a major use case, right? Um, right. I think you also have, uh, you told me, I, we have a lot of things I, I think to say about seed work, but we'll bring Jay, Jake here next time. So the, the CEO of seed work, the main developer, and I think it would be yeah. better to go in depth with him on that. But I think you also told me that you also have marketing budget for this, this whole thing to support yeah, so that? Yes, I actually paid the first $20,000 two days, two or three days ago towards a marketing company. Um, and uh, they're in, they're specialized in games. And so they're going to be focusing on the comics within the, within the Web3 gaming industry. Yeah. Um, getting influencers. So tons of influencers are going to be coming in. They're going to be getting Divi, you know, they're going to see Divi into all, to all their people because it's getting dropped in the game. They're going to be getting the comic books. They're going to be learning that, you know, you get these benefits if you have Divi. They're going to be coming in before we have our own token. So Divi is going to get the benefit of that because we don't have the Web3e token ready yet um, to, to actually launch. So, so Divi will get the first benefits of that. And, of course, we're launching things on Scale and on Saga. So those coins are, will be involved. And we have Doge, and we have a whole bunch of different coins that can kind of get dropped by the different monsters, so we can target different playing groups. But they think that they'll be able to, for the budget that we've given them, which is forty thousand dollars over three months, they think they'll probably get be able to bring in about ten thousand like people playing the game. And so, nice. so that's quite that's quite that's a few awesome. people. And so we've and we've hired a new person um, named Ivan, who's Ukrainian, who's helping, and he's really good. Like he's just. Jake says so he's basically as, as good as him or better in some areas while well, Jake's better in others. So we have, we basically doubled our, our progress now. And it's really, really re-energized Jake because he has somebody to bounce and it's making him better because he has ideas, people to bounce ideas off. But we have, they, he created a new version of, of the game. Like it's online now from two days ago. So a bunch of, so a few of the players that mm -hmm. love Divi that also, love the game from four have started to come back and they're playing because we're, all these people are going to come in so now if you go and play the game you can start accumulating weapon drops again and you're going to be able to sell this stuff and and divi is the going on our on our peer-to-peer -peer marketplace still That's so right. everyone's going to need divi in order to basically take advantage of that and so there'll be a lot of people coming in and a lot of them are people that are going to be one they're going to want to grind on the game He'll tell you more about the game. I can tell you more about sort of the philosophy of how this all works and how Divi's Right. Yeah, you told uh, me you have a new dev, you have new investors. So really, I think it is really uh, looking interesting for Siege Works. Really um, interesting. Yeah, Siege Works. So we should have a lot of, so, you know, long story short, we're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of people playing the game again. So if you ever played the game or want to play the game, what's cool about it too is that they've, they've now cracked the code of how to do this on browser. So they think they're going to make it better because a lot of people are reporting lag. I didn't see it, but um, other people were reporting it. So, but he's found a way to to make the game like one third of the size and run like three times faster as well. Nice. nice. Um, he's been working on this for months and months, and um, and so you're going to be able to play on your browser, which makes it 
so people that don't have to download it, they can just start playing, get them in. But then if they like the game, they can go download it and it'll work better, right? And the graphics are better and stuff, but they can play together. So people nice. in the browser are going to be able to play with people. And that's, that's really hard to do. And so they figured out how to do that. Um, and there's also going to be mining so you can get a pickaxe and you can mine. I saw and can... an ad for that. That looked fun. Yeah. So there's a bunch of cool stuff that we're, that we're adding different ways that people like to play. Like he was saying, not everybody wants to always be in a stressful situation of monsters trying to kill you. Some people yeah. want to just <laughs> yeah. like kind of relax and like, yeah. and now you it. can take the break within the game. Yeah. So that's, mining that's and good. farming, like we're going to add these different things and. Cool. Like a lot of female players, they like they like to play um, sort of role playing games. It was just they, were, they just actually released a um, a thing a thing that said there was an, on on Roblox is actually more female role playing game uh, players than there are males on Roblox. Interesting. And, huh. and so, but but the thing is that they pl tend to play different types of game where it's not right. shooting, but it's more like oh, build a build a farm or or take care of pets or something like yeah. this that's less right. violent. <laughs> right. Well, that's that's true, you know. It's so probably so, a lot better for the world, actually. Probably. So. <laughs> having, having kids, my my boys are more likely to play a game like a Siege Worlds, but my, my daughter would be like, what's one of those farming games? She would be more likely to play one of those, so that's funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and people love their farms. They love, love, love their farms. That's the way right. You, they love to love take care of to take care of something, right? Mm -hmm. Something that's growing and mm -hmm. they know that they, they're they doing what's needed. They try to understand how to take better care of it. I mean, it, it works like yeah, some, that. Somebody was, somebody was telling me that she had played Farmville and she was and she was telling me about how much she loved it. And I could see like her eyes were glazing over and she was remembering like all the exotic animals that she had and how she'd made their pens. <laughs> she was telling me how she planted flowers all around them. And it was so beautiful. and. And then when something happened to the game and she lost it all, how she cried for days. Oh she was my God. devastated. She cried Damn. for days. So this know? is the game I was thinking of. Was I think that's too involved. I think that's... <laughs> well, it's a lot of yeah, but it's important it, to understand. Right? Yeah, that's true. Well, I think we'll yeah. talk a lot more about the game with uh, Jake, but it actually leads yeah, to yeah. another game, uh, which is Tab Goat and actually DV Goat, because I think you have also a lot to say about that, the listing on Dap Radar. Um, oh yeah. Like, go ahead. Maybe you want to expand on that. So yeah. So so we were hired to build Tapgoat, and we're still building it. And you know, we have, we have our whole team on it. You know, to different to different degrees. Like our two of our art, our two of our artists in Costa Rica are full time on it. James and Joe are both full time on it. You know, they're still doing stuff for Lightningworks too, but they're basically working forty or fifty hours or even more just on Tapgoat and Launchgoat, which is going to be the first Telegram. So what is it? Can, can you explain a little bit what is what it is? Well, so there's this gigantic market as Hamster Combat played or proved that that for people that want to make money on their phones and they're and they're looking for different ways to do it, right? They can't get jobs, but they have a phone, and if you can give them away where they can just do something easy, they'll figure out the game and then they'll give it to their kids or they'll tap on they'll tap on the on a game while they're watching TV or doing something else. And so these games are are figuring out different ways to do this. So you don't have to play 24 hours, but you go back to it every hour and you keep the game going or you do something, you do a quest, um, this kind of thing. And Hamster Combat amassed 300 million players. So the market is gigantic. It's the same market that we're playing Axie Infinity, right? There are people that wanted to figure out a way to make money on their phones because they couldn't get a job uh, doing anything else. They're mainly in, in the developing world, in Indonesia, Philippines and these people of a lot of these people playing these games have like they they have they've studied calculus in high school you know they're in they've gone through school they're they're smart and they've, and now they've had a phone in their hand for sometimes for many of them for half of their lives you know even though they're very poor and their parents maybe make four hundred dollars a month they still have a phone because it's that important right. right and so these guys know everything and they have way more motivation than say American kids to like try to find a path forward right so these games are offering them a way to do that and so tap goat is another one of these but we're trying to do it really high quality with fantastic art and really good game sort of game ideas and so you got i can give you guys a link everybody can kind of join my team you know and then you can join each other's teams and stuff like this as we go along um but perfect yeah um, we can we put that in the description yeah i'll put the link in everybody can 
and join, and then you can, you'll, you'll be able to communicate with me and then build your own teams. Um, but nice. we can basically make it so that people are going to be getting the, you get these points, you accumulate them over time um, in different sort of different play patterns. We keep adding new things to it, and you'll be able to turn these points into actual GOAT token. And the GOAT token is the token of our launch pad, and the launch pad will be, you know, the first launch pad built in Telegram, but it also will work in Discord, and anybody, influencer will be able to launch their own tokens in their own Discords, <coughs> in their own Telegrams, <coughs> with this technology that's what um, Divi Go has. So we basically have a contract to build this for them, and we have, we have uh, uh, crypto-based VCs that have come in to support this and support us um for this so we're gonna have they already raised um one of the partners owns a launch pad his name's peter it's called house of crypto he raised almost six hundred thousand dollars in like three hours um there was incredible excitement for the idea not for the game but for the launch pad the game is just to get a, a zillions and zillions of players we already have like six hundred fifty thousand people that have signed up that have done some tapping and the game's not even done right this will, we believe, go to millions of users because my partners are very well known in the space and um, very well connected. So we have we have a lot of advantages, you know. And um, so, yeah, we're we're having this, but because we have access now to the six hundred fifty thousand Telegram users for this, we're going to be basically we're able to build things that leverage that that will be able to help Divi in in different ways. So. Um, there will be a lot of sort of Divi Go related stuff because they're also, you know, come funding us to finally finish some of the things in Divi Go, like the self custody side. We have self custody, but it's not, but it's not launched and it's not tested. So we're, we're going to need testers for that. Um, but there's a lot going on with that as well that will make it so a lot of, again, a lot of people can find out about Divi or will use Divi for something um, through that game. We also have the ability to like, you know, we could make our own version of that if we wanted to for Siege Worlds or for Starline if we, if we wanted to. We don't have the bandwidth to do it now, but in the future, once we kind of crack the codes on all this, we'll be able to launch our own games, um, tap games that are very good at accumulating users. Um, so really it's, nice. and it's, yeah, so that's something, yeah, well, we have to make sure everybody in Divi gets a link and they can join and play. It's, it's actually weirdly addicting. Like you just tap, you just tap for like a minute and then you put it down and you come back three hours later. I actually set an alarm. For a while, I was actually setting an alarm to wake up in the middle of the night just to do <laughs> oh it. God, it's dude. such a race I, for people to I will to get say, I, I played it. These it's are not wrong. my kind of thing, but I did play it and it's pretty well executed. So I, I, I will say it's that exactly. even yeah, it's, I'm not a, a tap. It is yeah, very good. I've seen other... You yeah, I've seen other Telegram clickers, and and they didn't look as refined. So this one no really way. looked nice, and yeah. it, is, uh, it, it works and we really even well. Added on the store, the story yet. There's actually a story behind it around behind these goats, and it's really good. And we're going to start adding that pretty soon. And we started working on like a webtoon comic, and so there's a whole world that's going to be built around this. It's going to be really nice. fun. Who did really you who did you have do the art? Was that was that out of NK's place that did the art on the on the goat? Well, so we have, we have the goat is the goat is being drawn by Kali, who's Costa Rican, uh, um, but he's somebody that was introduced to us by Pam, who and Pam is I found, how did I found her? I think I found her. I don't even remember how I met her now. I think I found her through, just like, Instagram. I think I found her Instagram as a uh -oh. Costa Rican artist, and I reached out and, and she wanted she wanted to quit her job. And so I, so we hired her, and so she's, so she does the coloring of all of them. So we, we have two of them working full time. So they all know the Anki, Anki team, but they never worked for that team. So Together. they, but they, okay. they go to all the, all of, we have our part, our known parties, you know, and we usually meet at one of these comic book themed restaurants or something that they have because they are crazy for comics and manga in Costa Rica, like way more than Costa Rica. I mean, the, than you, in the United States, like it's really impressive. Do you have any? Um id forward to maybe connect the gum nft and the tab goat like one time you could have the luck to have an nft dropping when yeah. you're tapping your goat or whatever i have a whole i have a whole proposal i wrote out called goat gum that um, i haven't even shown to my tap goat partners i don't even know about it just because there's so many <laughs> other things to do and 
And I know they'll say no. They're like, I got to finish the game first. <laughs> 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 Get distracted, you know, that's kind of their, so we, so, but yeah, but definitely we want to do something like that. It, it makes a lot nice. of sense because it, it allows you to create a lot of blockchain transactions, which everybody wants to see. It allows you to create a lot of TVL, total value locked as far as an NFT set. So you can imagine the value of a hundred million NFTs if the value is a dollar or whatever. Yeah. You, then you got a hundred million dollars locked up, you know, so it creates a humongous amount as... of value on chain, looking at the metrics that they're, that they care about right now. Mm -hmm. Because no, because nobody looks in the details, right? Like, I mean, you guys, like, oh, yeah. I was just gonna say, you yeah. guys just Go launched ahead. not too long ago, and and you have nearly a hundred thousand people already yeah, in the right. game. This doesn't even include everybody you just mentioned. It's pretty crazy because I think you gave me a link early on, and or maybe it was uh, NK gave me a link early on. Somebody did. And it's just grown so fast and you have all the tiers yeah. and the levels and it's just massive what all these people have done in there so far. Well, there's this, there's this economy of, we call them questing games rather than tap games because they don't have to be tapping, right? But they're basically games built into Telegram that are really easy to add new users because you just click a button and you, then all of a sudden you're playing the game. You don't need to go to a website. Um, I mean, it's basically HTML built in built into Telegram, um, but it makes it really easy for people to play. And Telegram allows people to do stuff with crypto, which none of the other social media and chat apps do. They don't give you free reign the way Telegram does. So everybody's moving into Telegram now. It's one of the most important things in the entire yes. blockchain space is that everybody's moving into Telegram. So there's this marketplace out there of 300 million plus people that, that are basically, they're finding these games because if you make a deal with like, we could make a deal with Hamster combat where we pay say 10 cents for everybody they send to us and in order to get points in hamster combat you have to do a quest and that quest may involve going and trying our game right and so so there's this economy of this ecosystem being built and it's competition among different different questing games we have quests that do the same thing in ours where people are all these people 300 million plus of them are going around trying all these different games and then trying to decide well which one do i actually want to spend them all day tapping or playing on or going back to. And so it's kind of like Discord, right? Like everybody's got hundred different Discords, but there's only a few you keep going back to over and over that you're paying attention so to. True. It's the same thing. This is tap this game, this questing game economy forming of hundreds of millions of people. And what's interesting about it is these hundreds of millions of people tend to be in countries where they don't trust their banks, they don't trust their currencies, they don't trust their their the system that they're in and they all the authorities already yeah. a lot of them putting their money into bit into bitcoin using binance mm -hmm. um and a lot of them have made money off of not coin and shiba and these kind of things they bought you know five dollars worth or whatever they could afford and they made a lot of money so now they're hooked you know exactly. and a lot of people have done this and, and if they haven't done that they all know somebody that's you know in their village in africa that all of a sudden got rich because they bought right. Shiba or whatever, exactly. you know, or Pepe, you know, and so everybody knows these stories now. And so, so that's why you see like in Nigeria, they have phenomenal adoption of crypto, but mainly it's through custodial buy. Actually, the, something happens it's with through Binance. intermediaries. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. buy it directly Binance often. They, they have leave. like a, a point they buy it in it's, their place. Yeah. I just want to add this that Rob Rob said, you know, I'm not really into games. You know, he's not into those kinds of things. You know what will excite Rob is if we could have hamster warrior bot goat tapper on side chains, that would be yeah. the he would be very excited. <laughs> be all over it. He will be so all over it when that happens. But wait, wait well, a second. Thing. I keep I keep asking when side chains, when side chains. When side chains, yeah. exactly. Right. When side chains. Yeah. We're all yeah. asking this, the same I'll thing. I'll be the first one to create one and I'll create some cool thing. For exactly. It, you know? We you will so. absolutely have the first opportunities for many things because you of course you have a team who can build and will the whole thing is about crypto utility made easy and then crypto utility on side chains and that functionality and that flexibility will, will be there. Anyway, I just want to, I just want to mention something that's kind of funny because I know we've been going for some time. I think we're a, a little bit longer, but I want to mention this about telegram. And I think that that's, that's, you're right. Telegram 
is a great place. Telegram is where a lot of the communities are. I will say that if you're kind of a meme token thing for a while there, it was Discord. If you're a game, maybe not like a tap goat game, but if you're a game, um, it's really Discord centered. It's not necessarily Telegram, but for crypto stuff and for these kinds of things, everybody is coming in mass to Telegram. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's something that we should maybe talk about because I think that we have, um, an old channel that's been closed and maybe that's something we should also tie into mentioning. Um, and maybe we can coordinate with some of those things. Niggs, I don't want to say anything too yeah, much. So that's cause I, it's I kind of a that... transition to the DV topic. So I think yeah. we can start with, um, because a lot of things happen um, lately to Divi. And um, of course, mainly it has been the KuCoin delisting and Divi Labs, um, one of the main driver of Divi over the last few years, who unfortunately, yeah, ceased operation. And I think this all fits into kind of the end of a chapter uh, where Divi tried a certain direction, which unfortunately uh, actually did work for a moment, but unfortunately didn't encounter the success that was expected. And now the the focus on the side chains and kind of a step back pre KuCoin, uh, back to Telegram, and we want to reopen things. We want to go back to smaller exchanges. Um, and so basically, yeah, talking about that, uh, acknowledging that this situation yeah. is obviously. Uh, not positive um, it directly, but in fact, there are still many opportunities and a lot of things to move forward with DV. So, talking about all of that, yeah, I think I think that Neegs Neegs likes to to be direct, right? And so, there's no question <laughs> his directness. He's saying it's not positive. You're right. Anytime you lose something, it's a loss, but as we all know, and even as your story attests to, one door closes, another door opens. And I think with all of this segue, especially with what you mentioned, Neeks, is that we are returning Divi in its purity for what it was, Crypto Made Easy, but we're going to be working with the partner to create the Crypto Utility Made Easy, but when it comes to third-party partners like exchanges and those kinds of things, we want to we want to meet and we want to reach out to those kinds of exchanges that are interested, that we can build great partnerships with, that we can build strong relationships with. And I think there's a lot of positives, especially forward future thinking. In the immediate, yes, losing KuCoin stunk, but let's just face it, for the last year and a half, it stunk at KuCoin because a large <laughs> yeah. portion of our community couldn't even trade on KuCoin. Yeah. And, yeah, and so that that destroys the emotion in the market. And then you have Change Now, who had its own, um, uh, we could say, internal um, works that it had to work through KuCoin. And they do that with all their exchanges. So it's not just KuCoin itself. They are still on KuCoin. Um, but that highlights the fact that if they were having some trouble in the Divi wallet, KuCoin was having trouble. And so it it just was a really bad situation to be so focused and having all of our eggs entirely in one basket that really wasn't beneficial for any of us for a long time. That's all I'm saying. So I'm yeah, I mean, saying good for updates, I'm excited right? about so the new stuff. The fact is, though, that things are moving away from centralized exchanges anyway. Yeah. And That's right. a lot of so there's been some experts that have basically written, you know, done analysis and said that they've basically proven that listing on next on centralized exchanges is usually a net negative. Um, so things are going to be moving more and more towards DEXs anyway. So if we just don't really need Divi to be anywhere except where people that really want to get out of the main one for whatever reason can go there and do it. As long as it's not too difficult, most people will never need to do that because they can exit through the EVM versions. 
and everything will be done with indexes. So I think that the KuCoin thing in the long term doesn't matter whatsoever. And even in the short nope. term, it barely matters. The only thing that matters about it is that a few people maybe felt it really mattered. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, because they know, feel but... it's like that Binance yeah. bump or a, or a, or anything like that. But if you have all of your eggs, let, let's just say you and I both went through BitTrue. BitTrue was always a great exchange for us. Me being on the technical side, helping out BitTrue, they were always good. You knew them. And then when we went to KuCoin, of course, it all just disappears, right? And and that and they were always willing to work with the community. They were always willing yeah. to work with us. And then well, they, we put yeah, all of our eggs US, in. They blocked of, US users, which is part of why I think they, everybody They moved. did. They don't yes. anymore. So that was the whole thing. So BitTrue is entirely open except for the, the two states that are the normal states, which is Texas and New York. Now, of course, none of us here work for BitTrue, so that can change mm -hmm. at any time. But but that's the yeah. great thing is that is that I think that we can start focusing on the exchanges and those, even though they are centralized exchanges, we can start focusing on those partners as the foundation, if I say that directly, encouraging those partners and encouraging people to you know to to uh, work with those partners that are really interested in working with us as a community you know i think yeah. that's that's great so bit true uh needs you know you can speak about it too and so can you rob but bit true is going to be somebody that we will be refocusing on and maybe i'll let needs or, yeah. or rob speak about it yeah i, so mean, I, I met with them I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some coffee yeah. So um yeah, sure. sure. Go ahead. We don't see it all yet. Now we see it. Don't freak <laughs> out again when I when I disappear. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, I was I was in Singapore for Token Twenty Forty Nine. I met with the Bitru folks. They're super nice, uh, super proactive, um, and uh, I'm mean, I'm looking forward to awesome. continuing with them. They've they've been rock solid the, since we got on there. Um, yeah, they've exactly. been really nice. Yeah. So I think that it's also important to kind of put the things in context because when when we got listed on KuCoin, it was uh, May 2021. And in fact, the next few months is when we have the rally with La Liga. And, and there was, I think, for DV as a whole, some kind of uh, more corporate direction. And this kind of reflected in the way um, DV was conducted, like the community was less connected and then there was this um change of pairing like all our pairing with btc has been removed and we like the desire to attach to usdt instead and yeah. and i think that while it was um a, probably a good attempt at the time we also have to acknowledge that in fact dv is another, in another time now and i Correct. think we have to multiply the number of small exchanges we are on we have to multiply the pairing probably bitcoin Correct. and not just be on usdt i think this was a strategy that was tried and unfortunately it didn't yield the result that we wanted at the time and so now yeah. Being on more DEXs, being on more small exchange, uh, get a BTC pairing is actually beneficial for DB people, moving forward. And so that's yeah. definitely something we will be we will seek for. People for are asking about it. You mentioned the BTC pairing. You know, I can't tell you once we got stuck with USDT, how many people spoke poorly about that. Now I'm talking about community members even in Divi wallet, because they were like, I have to pay so much ETH. You're talking about gas on these other chains where they're having to give you gas so that your, your users don't experience it or see it is because there's that negativity in, in that. And Ethereum was going through all of its, all of its ups and downs and, and being paired with another cryptocurrency, you either have to buy a crypto, let's say like Bitcoin, Litecoin, whatever. You used Rip, you talked about Ripple earlier, Ripple or something. Um, and you send it to that centralized exchange and then you got to flip it into USDT and then you have to flip it into Divi and then yeah. you have to get the Divi back out. It's so many more steps. So if, if we can create relationships where we have liquidity on exchanges that are paired with something that's other than USDT, um, that is better. Uh, we've seen in the That's channel right. 
how people are using Litecoin. And I'm not saying that's a pairing that we will ever have. It's not that I'm not against it. I'm actually for it. I don't know the market, how big that pairing would need to be. But Bitcoin is also there. And we know everybody who has Litecoin has some Bitcoin. You know, so it's it's it is about having those pairs that are crypto pairs, not Ethereum token based pairs, which brings us into the other problem of which USDT. And I won't digress yeah. and go into that direction, but <laughs> yeah. we've had people who, when they used the Divi Labs mobile wallet, would buy. <laughs> Uh, they had they have how many different types do they have? They would have <laughs> yeah, they would yeah. have so many, and all of these chains are yeah. pretty much forks of each other with some advancements and some changes, and they all have the same address <laughs> format. And so then these poor people would end up with with let's say Polygon USDT. They can't even see it in the Divi wallet. They just want Divi. It's just too frustrating to have all of these stable tokens um, as our exclusive. If you want it. You can have it, especially with our pairings on exchanges, if we can, you know, work with the community and get those. But BTC is a good one. I think we should get back. Sorry, that was a whole ramble there. But. No, yeah. and I think your Litecoin <laughs> example was great because we have seen that the environment uh, evolved, right? Like the biggest platform, they restrict us customers for kyc right and so what happens is that us customers kind of go through coinbase or go through kraken and then they get their favorite currency there and then they move to one of those smaller exchange to buy the coins that are not listed on those on those us exchange and people are getting a lot more used to do that than they were before um also because coinbase offers a great rates for that so it doesn't cost them too much in fees and really they can they can move around everywhere we've seen that a lot with divi people buying litecoin moving that to the divi wallet and then using change now to to buy divi because it was it was a cheaper path and and i think it is um something that is going to continue because of the setup of how those exchange are built and then the other side all the dexes right like if if you want to be able to buy with your credit card or your account, you have to pass by, you know, one of those entry points. Uh, but then after, once you are inside, then you can go all around. And I think it will get more and more um, standard for people. And with the sidechain, we also count on that because obviously you will have to have this interaction. It will be easy, very easy to move around. But then obviously, like, people will also want to be able to have the their favorite currency it to do whatever they want right yeah. and so this is one of the advantage of that it's that it's completely agnostic and so it can really support any any currency moving forward so so rob is going to use all of his btc to buy all the divi is what we're saying <laughs> yeah is that how we're doing this uh, i don't know thank you I, rob I, I just, <laughs> okay thank you for your support rob you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> so so talking about exchanges Yes, so we'll fall uh, into that. I, oh no, maybe we want to address the DV Labs situation first. So right. the fact that DV Labs is stopping operation um, has a direct impact on DV Foundation because DV Labs was yeah. um, on top of leading a part of the way forward. DV Labs was also in charge of managing a ton of uh, assets for DV, basically a ton of things that were allowing the desktop wallet to run like the primer, uh, some tools like Cedar nodes and all that. And so basically we have to transition that out of DV Labs to another entity that is helping the foundation. And we are in the process uh, of doing that. We expect that um, the basic features for the desktop wallet, so you can stake, you can do all that. However, you will have issues accessing the console or other things like that because it's all about some uh, critical part of the network about 2FA. It's kind of locking for security. It's locking some of the features. And until we have that backup, it is going to continue like that. So we expect to have this recovered before the end of the week. However, for the votes, like being able to redeploy votes and have the price in the wallet, we expect that this will come over uh, the next few weeks like it would take a little exactly. bit more time we're working with the desktop team and we're also raising funds on the side because all that will cost money until 
we can generate revenue again with the votes. So we're moving right. all that and we'll be able to offer you this, uh, this service again uh, as soon as possible. So I that's just the situation. Append, yeah, go I ahead. want to append that because it confuses a lot of people. This has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the blockchain. Right. <laughs> it is it right, is a right. third party company that was offering services. It has zero to do with the blockchain. So even when you say the 2FA is affecting it, you say the network, it's not the blockchain that it affects. It is a That's right. service, it is the wallet a functionality that was a That's wallet right. feature that protects the clients. And Jeff can attest, it was put in place at the love and heartfelt, you know, response and request of the community to make sure that people were had that another level of fence and protection in the desktop wallet. We may we are definitely going to modify that coming in the future, um, and and look for other issues or op, uh, look for other opportunities maybe. But that is a feature and function that is 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 doing what it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, right now it's causing an inconvenience for those who are legitimate and they need to get into certain things anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. So now the, the other impact is obviously that, uh, some of the services that we have in, we had in the mobile wallet, uh, change now conversion and simplex buy. So those uh, systems are on hold. So for simplex, both have ensured that they want to continue working with us. Absolutely. So there is a lot of administrative detail to, to work on because obviously they were working with DD Lab, so now we have to kind of reorganize all that. It's taking a little bit of time. However, Simplex will be able to connect to Bitru. So once we have liquidity there that is working, uh, they will be able to connect back there and would we'll have Simplex buy again. Uh, for Change Now, it's a little bit more complicated. So Change Now doesn't have a connection to Bitru, and so they propose us to. Uh, either list us um, like any exchange. And so they ask for a price for that. So it, it is $30,000. However, they also offer to connect to the liquidity pool in Uniswap. And this is actually interesting because the liquidity pool in Uniswap is a decentralized process, right? And it is users putting DV and Ethereum in that pool. And whatever uh, conversion that happens on that pool now rewards the people who are providing liquidity, right? That's what was created um, with the EDV situation. And, and it, is really allow, it really allows the users to kind of take part in this trading thing. Now, to be able to connect change now to this liquidity pool, we would have to grow the pool to $100,000 of value locked, right? Like currently it's at $32,000. So that would mean adding about $70,000, uh, 35 and 35 on each side. And that would be basically user, the users who would move their DV there and some Ethereum so that we can reconnect all that. And that would have also some other beneficial effect because basically whatever Jeff is trying to build right now and with the SK DV, like the SKV, like that would also enable to have this pool uh, very strong to offer that path to the other to the other coins, right? So it is, I think, the best option instead of paying thirty thousand um, dollar, you know, change now for them to uh, basically do the whole thing and then get all the fees. Mm -hmm. Instead, I think it is better because it does decentralize at still at least part of the process, and then the the community can take part. Exactly. Cool. So cool. we will we'll like give articles about that, more details, and I think it would be something to talk about with the community. Um, and so to finish the exchange topic, uh, I think we have <laughs> yes. uh, somewhat a good news. Maybe you want to announce it, boys. I don't know. Maybe Rob wants to announce it. I no, don't know. He has his he's all you, you did all the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did so, all the work, boys. Go ahead. So... Well, I mean, it's it's just something that you just develop relationships with people, and it started earlier on. And, and we did have some other community members that mentioned this exchange, but I also help out other blockchains and other communities, and they had good experience with them. So I would say that none of this, none of this is possible if it weren't for a private group of Divi owners who did all the things to make it possible and 
were able to help me create a, a listing uh, application, uh, get it approved, and it came from the community entirely. This private group funded the listing fee, and yes, we're going to be listed on uh, uh, Zegex. So that's the that's, that's right. the great thing that's coming, and and this other this group of private individuals is also coming together and you know them they're in the community so it's private but it's they're in discord you you know who they are you can figure it out i don't care it, it the point is is that they're really excited about um you know this opportunity they're really excited about bitrue of, of course too but they're really excited to partner with us on this vision of reaching out to um other exchanges and developing these relationships that we're talking about so when are we going to list or when are we going to open up on Zegex? Well, I think that that kind of comes to two points. The day we list or with the day we open on Zegex is the day we do what? Is the day think, we're going to open up Telegram too. So I that's think right. that's the great thing. So we have two great things happening. We are going to be opening up on a new exchange. And by the way, it's friendly. It has very little light KYC. It's very open um, or no KYC within a certain limit. Uh, and so it's very open for everyone to participate on. And we're going to come back to Telegram, which we know that's where we should be anyway. So hey, it's not just, that Discord just, isn't a bad place. Yeah. It's, not, it's not that we don't want to be in Discord. We want to be in both. But I'm very excited to return back to Telegram. I'm just saying that out loud. If you hear my excitement, of course, you know it's there. I, I Real love quick Telegram on the uh, on the Zegex that that spelled with an X E G G E X. Um, yeah, who knows if I'm pronouncing right. it correctly? Yeah, that's right. No, no, you are. So, it says so right there. It says P.S. It's it can, pronounced like Zegex, but it's spelled X E G G E X. It's a palindrome. We'll just call it Kazuk. Right. So <laughs> this exchange, um, this exchange is not in the top. It's uh, I think no. around the hundreds place or something like that. But we have uh, we have had excellent feedback from them. Uh, they're ready. They're just waiting for our word to start DV. So they're already integrated it. Uh, they're already, um, it is also an interesting exchange because they also offer you to basically build your own pool. So you can yeah. anytime build a pool for DV and whichever coin they support. So it, it's also very interesting for that. And we'll, we'll be uh, very interested to see how uh, you like this exchange. Um, and, and what currencies are we starting there with? So we'll start with uh, USDT, I believe, right? So we, yeah. we plan to move slowly away from usdt and have btc but for now we wanted to have a consistency with the with the correct. other listings correct that's right yeah um, so that's exciting that's exciting yep so it is. some growth and we will obviously we're going to continue trying to con you know this path forward with more growth um <laughs> but those those two are our current stepping stones that's right. And I think we can give uh, just a little bit of info because we we passed the um, third quarter of 2024. So I think yeah. a little bit of info about our partner and how it is going. So obviously, we're still um, not really motivated to talk too much before they reach that major milestone. However, they they have been going to conventions. They've been meeting people. Um, it is looking good. The, uh, however, they obviously they are uh, dependent of the market timing, and those last few months were definitely not the best to raise money. <laughs> we actually yeah. have um, opening, like creating a project, raising money, building a community as part of the next topics in some of the next videos because I think it's really interesting to have some kind of information of how it works in the background we actually have a had a little bit with jeff today um but yeah so they, they're moving forward not enough for us to give you more than that but it is definitely progressing and they, they are having some success just not enough for us to get public yet yeah so there's activity there there's things cooking there's things in the fryer it's been flipped over the pancakes are cooking so, so good things will happen. Good things will happen. It's just not, uh, I'd like my plate filled right now, but it's, it's on the griddle. 
<laughs> I'm hungry. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That, that was a right. bad analogy, but it's it came out of the desire for food. <laughs> Sounds good. And then anything anyone wanted to add? I mean, I'm sure there are so much more to say about scale, about Difigo, about the side chains, about like all of that. But I think we can have we can have another call. I think it was already a very Sounds long good. one today. Yeah, we can uh, yeah? focus on maybe smaller topics in the future. <laughs> or focus yeah, I think we topics. had we kind of addressed here. so much, yeah. right? It was a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff has so many irons everywhere. You can't have Jeff and think it's going to be a 15 minute conversation. <laughs> you don't oh, want it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we also learned that Jeff can love other blockchains too. So <laughs> it's, it's all right. And we all do, right? We like, do. Uh, again, yeah. like it's not, it's not a solo adventure. Like we're all doing that together. And mm -hmm. like DV is, wouldn't be here if there weren't other blockchains before. And, and the side chains 100%. and the model that we're going for wouldn't look like that if all the DeFi adventure never happened, right? So, you know, Correct. it works, I mean, works together. I I like other blockchains, but I only love Divi. I have to be very clear. <laughs> that. That's nice. That's nice. I think we're all kind of like that. We are. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. That all was right. great to have you, Jeff. Right, um, I don't know if you will be here with... Um, with Jake next time, but you you definitely invite him. It's always difficult with the schedule, but we can try to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to do it with him and let him do most of the talking. He's definitely more shy, so I have to... <laughs> we'll push him, we'll push him. I'll ask as, him not, questions. Not as, yeah, not as used to doing it, but um, but yeah, it'll be good to have him. People like to see the founder and the founder definitely. of it. And, and, and the founder. Has, like development questions. So cool. It's, uh, and That's he great. knows more about what's going on. For me, it's always like, Jake, do this, do that. Can you build this? What about that? You know, giving him <laughs> impossible lists, yeah. task lists, and this kind of stuff. Cool. So All right, he's guys. Actually getting the one doing everything. Getting the one. Cool. Before right, we start thanks, on another so. one, we're, yeah. we're, we have been going on so long. I think yeah. this was a great chat. I think it was <laughs> good for everyone to hear about. The trials and tribulations. We had one phase in Divi. We have a second <laughs> phase in Divi. We have a third phase in Divi, but there will be a fourth phase in Divi. And that's <laughs> when crypto made easy is elevated, but crypto utility is coming to the forefront. So pairing those things together and opportunities for everyone to participate. So all that's right. right. Utility is the keyword. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye.